Emily Carr was very much a product of her own time. Her approach was this new way of seeing the world and applying it to this society that she saw as fragile and disappearing. It's tempting to label her approach as some sort of investigation into primitivism, but that's really not what she was doing. She approached this subject with an empathetic eye. She was trying to share this art and this culture that had been marginalized with a larger and more mainstream audience. Emily Carr is a Canadian painter from British Columbia, born in 1871. Her mother died when she was very young. Her father died a couple years later. So she was basically raised by her oldest sister. In 1907, Emily and her sister Alice decided to undertake this incredible trip where they traveled up the west coast of Canada. They traveled on foot, they traveled by boat, they slept in forests among indigenous communities. This was not something that was the norm in early 20th century Canada, much less for just two women to do by themselves. So it's very clear that she felt this almost spiritual connection with these people and a draw to capture their way of life and their land onto canvas. She did have some formal artistic training in the United States in San Francisco, and then she went to England a few years later, lived and worked in an artist colony there. The turning point of her career was her trip to Paris beginning in 1910. Her work transformed after her time in Paris. Her palette became extremely bright and saturated and kind of characterized by that really contrasting color palette that we see in the work of the Fauves. And her brushwork really loosened up. It becomes much more expressive, much more progressionistic. While she was in Paris, she exhibited her work at the 1911 Salon des Atomes. That was really her first critical recognition and success. She returns home to Canada in 1912 and begins to translate the lessons that she learned in Paris to her homeland. She takes her biggest inspiration from the art of the people of the First Nations and she sketches them firsthand. Emily Carr was not the first artist to paint the art and iconography of the people of the First Nations, but her approach was an ethnographic and they're full of feeling and full of immediacy and really trying to capture the spirit of what she felt while she was observing all of this. Skidons is among the largest canvases in her body of work and it dates to 1912, just a pivotal moment in her career. The perspective she adopts is a low one, so you can tell she's situated her easel right up on the beach, right in front of the totems. Her brushwork is very loose and very expressive. She favored a wet consistency with her paints, so it feels very immediate. It emphasizes that sense that we're seeing the world through her eyes. She renders the sky and the totem poles themselves in these beautifully modulated tones of cool blue and gray, but then the landscape itself is much brighter, and you really can see the influence of the phobes that she's applied to her canvases. The critical reception to this work was not positive and she sort of fell into a depression and stopped painting for a number of years. She didn't start again until Eric Brown at the National Gallery of Canada decided that these works were important and needed to be shown. That provided a catalyst and a measure of support where she felt confident enough to resume painting. When she returned to painting, she was introduced to the Group of Seven, which is an association of Canadian painters. The most important relationship she formed with one of those artists was with Laurent Harris, whose work features in this sale as well. And I think for the first time, she really felt a creative and professional home among these other like-minded painters. The link between a painter like Emily Carr and other female artists like Georgia O'Keeffe or Frida Kahlo is that they had to carve out their own paths because they were women. They didn't fit into societal norms, even what a traditional female artist was supposed to be. They each had this very distinct vision of what the world around them looked like and they translated it with so much individuality. Ultimately, being able to work with and sell a painting like Skidans is an extremely special opportunity for us. She's a painter that's just really not that well known outside of her home country, and so we're absolutely delighted to be able to share not only the work itself, but the story of this unbelievable painter and pioneer with collectors around the world.